Sports Desk, keeping on top of your teams in news, stats, and wins. This is SIBN Sports. Welcome to SIBN Sports, keeping you on top of your teams in news, stats, and wins. I'm Matthew Bugs here with. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. We are here. We're excited to talk about some great things in sports. Week nine of NFL football. What have you guys seen out there that has been marvelously crazy so you far? Have, have seen stuff, I think there's a lot going on this week. And I just one of the games that we really want to discuss and talk about is uh, the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Over the Cardinals. And big game, huge game for Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a beast game for him. For he forty seven percent of his passes. Yeah. We're caught. Ooh. 47%. 14 out of 30. Huge game for him. 218 passing yards. Four touchdowns. Even though he threw one interception, the four touchdowns yeah. really made a huge difference for him. Now, at the beginning of this game, it, you already knew what was going to happen, and you knew that it was going to be a big game right. for Green Bay. Just from the first possession, um, uh, Pass, to possession two, uh, Rodgers to Cobb. Yes. And the second possession of the game. Right. Rodgers to Cobb. Yes. For a touchdown. Mm -hmm. You got to be proud. If, you, if you're Mike McCarthy, you got to be proud that your offense is putting out big numbers like that for your quarterback and just, you know, being able to get the ball downfield in a timely manner, score quickly. Yes. You start fast. Finish fast or start fast, finish strong is yes. exactly how the And you the know how important that is in time. these games. After watching week after week, we understand that that is the most important is to finish, start strong, and finish strong. Because you're going to either win in the first quarter or you're going to lose in the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's either or. So you got to play the game. Uh, Randall Cobb, three catches for 37 um, yards, uh, two touchdown catches for him. Crabtree, one catch for 72 yards, one touchdown for him. James Jones, four catches, 61 yards, one touchdown for him. I mean, just a big game for the wide receivers. Aaron Rodgers throwing exact. The guys are coming up, catching the ball. Big game for them. So excited to see that game. No, real excited. And, you know, I have to honorable mention Fitzgerald because he had a great game even in a losing cause. Mm -hmm. That young man is awesome to watch. one hand catch even though it was out of bounds. Just to see him play and the way he can just grab a ball like that out of the air, it is amazing. Now, I know you also wanted to talk about the Colts and Miami. Big game for Andrew Luck. It is, it, is, it is honestly surprising as to uh, Indianapolis Indianapolis's yeah. <laughs> outcome so far this year. As many yeah. thought that without Peyton Manning, they would probably fall way down, uh, way down the line. But yes. they are still maintaining strong. Yeah. Uh, six and three, as we have, if it's five really, and three. or five and three correction, yeah. as we've already well, stated. Check this out. In week six, week six, they were two and three. Mm -hmm. So they are now five and three. They have won their last three games. I mean, they just have the momentum at their back. The quarterback, listen, record-breaking passing from this young man. Now, in the, it shows that he had, as far as the third down, he was just ridiculous on third down. He completed 13 of 16 third down passes mm -hmm. for 204 yards, 11 first down. That I is. mean, you know how important a third down is and how important it is getting that first down. Third down conversion is a big for teams. It's huge. Huh. It's and. huge. And I think he, and the good thing for him that caused him to win that game was that he was on point. He was exact with his pass and then he had people catching it. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, you had Wayne had seven catches for 70 Reggie yards Wayne. for one touchdown. Mm -hmm. You had Hilton. He had six catches for 102 yards for one touchdown. Huge game for them. Uh, Tanny Hill did not have a horrible game. He had 22 of 38 for 290 yards. Pretty quiet. One touchdown. He was pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. But it just, you can't overtake luck. I, and I don't know if his name has anything to do with it, but I tell ah. you. <laughs> he's playing great football ball right now so we want to thank you for joining us today here on SIBN Sports um, just so much to talk about and so many things to do I know you had another um, game that you were interested in, in talking about um, let's see here there were so many huge games 
What was the other one? I know you were breaking down. Go ahead. And <laughs> look, it's your turn. Talk. Well, I tell you, well, I tell you what. What I do besides games, I do want to highlight teams that aren't really doing so hot at the moment. Oh, yeah, please, Jacksonville please. is one of them. They are yeah. one of seven, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Mike Malarkey, former offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. I, I just don't quite understand, which I want you guys to help us out. Please check us out on our Facebook fan page at facebook.com forward slash SIBN Sports. Let us know your thoughts and your comments and suggestions on that. But for Jacksonville, how is it a team that can do so bad for so many years in a period of, uh, in a period of time? They grab top draft picks, mm -hmm. but still aren't really able to produce anything. As stated, they're one in seven right now. Yeah. They are last in the NFL in points, yards, and also passing yards. Mm -hmm. Now, they drafted Justin Blackman, wide receiver. They got Andre Branch, a defensive end. They have a pretty, you know, pretty okay quarterback for Blaine Gabbert. What exactly is it that is hurting them right now? They've, they've okay, you said they were last in three things. Yes. Passing. Points, points, and, points yards. and yards. Yes. I mean, that's what wins games. <laughs> if your passing is off, your yards are off, and your points are off, your points are off because your passing is off. So your basically, it's a big because, triangle. It's a big triangle. Your points are off because your yards are off. If you're not getting yards, passing, or rushing yards, then you're not going getting to be yards. able to win. You're These guys gonna are going to have points. to pick it up in the right places. They're going to have to learn how to run some offense that gets them down the field. If you're not getting yards, you're not winning football. Well, and they try, as I said earlier, they tried to draft Justin. They got Justin Blackman in, uh, for the offense as wide receiver to plug the hole in the offense. Mm -hmm. Try to get some outlets too. Yeah. And Andre Branch on defense, one of the best pass rush. He was a great pass rusher in college football. What is it exactly that you know? Is it is it in the coaching? I mean, it's is, several things because they lost to the Chargers, uh, thirty-one to seventeen. So they still have a weak point in the defense. Because they're allowing a lot of points as well. And the sad part is... So you're is not the, getting any points, and then you're allowing a lot of points. And the sad part about that is, is that we, we talked last week about how San Diego, what is their problem? And it's not their defense. Their offense is a mess. Right. But they stomped all over Jacksonville, and it's understandable. It's a weaker team. Right. But, hey, you know, that... that 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 is something that you know. Hopefully, they can look at in the future. Yes. Uh, like I said, I wish Mike Malarkey the best as he left Atlanta and went down there to Jacksonville. That hopefully next year they get a high, they get another high draft pick, they get top of the lottery, and they can pick up something yeah. in the meantime. And they just need to focus on the most important things. And I think you said it. You said it best. The yards. You got to get down the field. If you're not making up ground on that field, you're not going to get to the points. You got to at least get in field goal position. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to be. You don't want to be last in the NFL in anything. No. And one in seven ironically, is not a good place to be. ironically, another team I want to talk about is Kansas City. They are also one in seven. They both have the worst records in the league right now. Uh, Romeo Cornell, head coach over there. They are actually third in the league overall in rushing yards at uh, almost 150. But the thing is, is that why are they one in seven? Yeah. You know, they got uh, Matt Castle over there at QB. Jamal Charles is their running back. Pretty good. And um, they've got Dwayne Boyd on um, on defense. Mm -hmm. So exactly, what is their problem as well? Mm -hmm. what, what What is keeping them? You're third in the league in rushing yards, but yet you are you not producing any points off of that? Is that the question? Mm -hmm. And let us know, folks, what is exactly the problem between both of these teams let us know on our SIBN Sports fan page. We'll be right back here at SIBN Sports. You're listening to SIBN Radio on the Select USA TV iBroadcasting Network. You're listening to SIBN Radio. Tackle this poorly in football in my whole life. 27 years of coaching. That's the worst exhibition tackle. First of all, you think of your uh, professional debut. What's it like in the professional ranks? Anything special? Well, we didn't block. No. But we made up for it by not tackling. We've got to be the dumbest team in America in terms of playing the game. And I'm highly critical because of the way we give games away. We give them away. Period. I apologize for that. That's the best we can do. Uh, that's a sad problem. Put your name on it. 
Be the guy that says, I said, because I was in the locker room with Coach Edwards, that the mood was there. Well, you weren't in the locker room with Coach Edwards. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. You know, the play at the end, by the, by the call by the officials, it's flat out chicken shit. All right? It's, it's a flat out chicken shit call by that crew. We took exactly the same play that Atlanta ran trying to block the winning field goal against New England last week, and we ran that against them. And they didn't call it last week. So I'm telling you, it's a flat out chicken shit call. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. to SIBN Radio. Hope you enjoyed those coaching rants right there, folks. It is uh, pretty interesting. It's indicative of what's really going on. You know, it's funny to hear the coaches behind the scene actually saying what troubled them about the game for real. Yeah. You know, because when they're in front of the cameras with the uh, uh, with the uh, press conference and everything, you know, they're all politically correct. But when you hit a rant like that, yeah. I mean, they're really telling you. And I talked to my we father. We played horrible. I, I always ask. I said, you know what? If the team lost, if the whoever's team lost the game, and they go up and they talk to the head coach. Why is it the first words out of their mouth is, Coach, what do you think about your team's uh, performance today? The first thing that comes out of their mouths is, oh, uh, I was very disappointed. Yeah, and right. Like, they suck. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Isn't that uh, funny, though? Yeah, that's the worst. that's the worst question you could ask a coach. Now, one of the things I wanted to bring up, we were talking about the Packers. Yes. Um, the Packers had a lot of injuries, though. Yes. Concerns me for next week. Mm -hmm. um, they had several key injuries, as a matter of fact. Uh, wide receiver Jordy Nelson had an ankle injury. Oh, God. He came out of the game. You had right tackle Brian Bugalaga. I guess I said his name right. I hope so. <laughs> he had a problem with his hip. He was having in, uh, problems with his hip, and they had to take him out the game. Mm -hmm. And then a big one, outside linebacker uh, Clay Matthews. Oh, man. Uh, been having problems with his hamstring. Um, and so he also had some hamstring injuries as well. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with Green Bay with all these injuries. I mean, and injuries in key places. You know how important the defense is in this game. Even though Aaron Rodgers is playing really well, you got to have that defense in place to keep the points down for the other team, even though Rodgers is running up the points. Right. You don't want to make sure that your defense is not allowing points as well. You know, you can't win otherwise. It's got to so, be balanced. It has to be balanced. So we're hoping that uh, these injuries will not affect it too much. Uh, hopefully they have some people that can move into those positions and they can keep moving forward because right now the Packers are playing some great football. So we want to continue to see them do well. They're actually 6-3 and three right now. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing I want to mention about those Cardinals. Yes. Uh, they were 4-0. and And they were one of the undefeated teams in the one NFL, along with Houston in week four. and Atlanta. Guess where they are now? 4-4? Four 4-5. and 4-5. Four? Four and four and yeah, week 9. 4-5. So they have lost the last five games. I mean, that doesn't say a lot about where the Cardinals are right now. Unfortunately, um, uh, they're not doing very well. As what's we what's tell. hurting them the most is the question. I don't know, because Andy Dalton threw 26 of 42 passes 299 yards he did throw an interception but he had one touchdown i don't know i don't know what's what is happening why are they falling to pieces like that um and what's causing that to happen it just doesn't make sense do you have any stats on that well, coach weisenhunt's gonna just have to look at all right where do we fall apart yeah is it the offense that's falling apart yeah. or, or is it the defense that's falling apart well the defense is definitely allowing a lot of points as we can tell i mean 31 to 17 um, you know, the, the the quarterback is definitely doing his part. Andy Dawn is, uh, you know, 26 of 42 is not bad on the day for 299 passing yards uh, and one touchdown. Then so, it's probably somewhere in the defense, and hopefully they can just look and go and look at their uh, defensive linemen. I mean, you got uh, Bonnie Holiday, uh, David Carter uh, right down there at the uh, the defensive line. Yeah. Um, Quentin Groves. Um and uh, Paris Lennon, you got them. You got those folks right there at linebacker. The question is, where, like I said, where is it? Is there somewhere in the defense? Where's the breakdown? Where, where, where's the breakdown? Right.